Welcome back to the Rookie in the Vet podcast. We're getting into these summer months. Not a lot going on. No high school sports anymore. Those concluded last weekend. But Illinois football around the corner, sort of. We're in the month of June. Um, Hopefully... Um, we see more from them co- going through the summer months heading into September. Well, Brett Bielema apparently had a very big recruiting yeah. 48 hours here recently. Uh, nine new recruits coming in. Um, the man's doing work, it mm-hmm. seems like. And, you know, he's continuing to do his thing, building more of this recruiting pipeline in the state of Illinois and kind of spreading out from there. Um but, I mean, going to have a lot of depth, it seems like. Yeah. Um, and especially with some of those vacated positions that we had with the NFL draft, especially in that defensive secondary. Um, we'll see what the defense is going to offer up this year. But you got a lot to choose from. It seems like some very good talent's been coming in. Um, and, I mean, the question is, how are they going to do this year? Yeah, and adding on to that, you know, Big part of those, you know, those big name, big name in quotes, recruits coming in is having that winning culture finally. I mean, it's been years since Illinois has been in a bowl game. I think it was 2019 was the last time before this year they were in a bowl game. And before that, maybe like 2016 maybe. So there's not many years where they have a winning record. So him being able to establish that this past year, it all it only does you wonders in recruiting. Yeah. But, and so it seems like this new uh, recruit that he actually picked up out of, I think it was Ohio, uh, defensive line guy is putting his own recruiting cap on and saying, come to Illinois now, mm-hmm. like stop waiting and like just get on this train. And I mean, good on that young man too. Um, Cause yeah, that's what you want is you want players that you have that chemistry with. You can build kind of a family, which is the big thing with Illinois. Um, but, I mean, if he can bring more talent with him over here, I'm all for that. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens um, with a lot of players. You see it more in basketball because of AAU circuits, but where – People start bringing in friends they know that are also high recruits and people they've met along the way and like let's team up and let's go uh, play college ball together. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it does good things for Illinois. But uh, heading into this season, I mean they got a they got a tough schedule this year. Yeah, it was tough last year. It was but tough they were, last. They were year, able to do well, especially with Michigan on the schedule last year and yep. towards the end of the year in very close game. Um, and I do think that really spoke to how good that Illinois squad was. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they would have beat Michigan in that game, yeah, Big Ten title probably would have been. It could have been in that game. Yeah. But, I mean, they're starting off the season with two out-of-conference, well, technically three out-of-conference opponents in the first four games. And yeah. I think we saw that last year because they played Wyoming, uh, Chattanooga, Virginia, and Virginia. Those were three out of conference games to start the year, which they handle business in all of them. Yep. This year you do have Toledo at the top of the schedule. Toledo's D one AA, yeah, D one AA, I believe, where they play in the FCS yes. championship with like South Dakota State, North Dakota State. Um, but I mean, they're a team that has beat Division one teams before. Yeah. They get they're one of the top teams in that lower end Division one. And they're able to really compete. They might give Illinois a run for their money. That's first game of the year in Champaign, too. So it's going to be at Memorial Stadium. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure and I Illinois... do think, you know, the games where they have at home this year are definitely can go in their favor with that home crowd advantage as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Illinois Memorial Stadium is always super packed. Um, not a ton of visitors that I noticed too much from some of the games I went to yeah. last year, but I think it just depends on you know who they're playing, right? Because there was a good crowd against Purdue, right? It was really cold, but there was a good crowd against Purdue because obviously it's only two hours away, two and a half hours away. But there, the 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 crowd is growing, right? People are excited about football because they're winning again. Yes, and you saw as the year went on last year, the numbers were going up. They were also doing sales to get the numbers up, right? And it's. I think it's only gonna improve this year. Um, what's tough is though. 
I guess you, you don't have those big recognizable faces like last year with Chase Brown, Sidney Brown. Yep. I mean, Witherspoon towards the end of the year where, like, people love. I mean, pe- people are going to find players they love this year. Right. But, like, Chase, I think Chase Brown gave people something to be excited about. Definitely. I mean, he was electric in the running game. I think you're just going to have to find brand new faces to fall in love with this mm-hmm. year. Once you see what they're putting out there on the field, you're going to be saying – that's my guy. That's the jersey I want to go and get and rep mm. at all the games this year. Yeah. So. I think that could be maybe Luke Altmyer a quarterback. Maybe it's tough for D-linemen to kind of be that face, but you have uh, Johnny Newton, Keith Randolph on that defensive line, uh, Matthew Bailey in the secondary, an Illinois native. Um, but, yeah, pe- pe- people find a – find their guy and hopefully bring in more people in the crowd. And Johnny Newton seems to kind of feel a little bit snubbed on yes. his rankings right now cuz what he was ranked like number 1 in the Big 10 or something, but then like nationally he's at like number 11 mm-hmm. in his position, but yeah, I mean he could, he could be a first round pick this year. That's yeah. where a lot of uh mock drafts have him. But I saw he was also adding on to that. Uh, somebody had posted like the top defenses heading into this next year, and Illinois wasn't on the list, and you know he was offended by that. Yeah, but, I mean, no. gives him fuel to take yeah. into those games, and I mean they were the top defense in Big, college football yeah. last year. Um, Twelve point seven points per game allowed, um, and again we lost a lot of those key guys to the draft, mm-hmm. but now we're gonna have to get new key guys to come in fill those roles, but I would love to see that lockdown defense come back. Obviously, they're doing wonders um, at practice and developing Mm -hmm. those guys. Um, So I think, again, it kind of rests on what the offense is going to be able to put up. The numbers were Mm -hmm. okay last year. I think uh, DeVito only had 15 touchdowns on the season. Yeah, he he did Um, put up really many special numbers. Chase Brown. Yeah. Ten touchdowns for Chase Brown, um, sixteen hundred yards. So, gotta fill that running back spot. New quarterback would love to see you know a good air raid offense. I and I, I think it's gonna be there's gonna be much more emphasis on the pass game this year compared to last year. Okay, that's what I'm excited about. Why do you say that? Because Luke Altmaier is at quarterback. Okay. I also I would also say because Chase Brown's not a running back. True. They do have Reggie Love. They have. Um, I'm blanking on their other running back, but it's going to be a big committee this year. But it's yeah. a good committee. I mean, Reggie Love can easily be the number one, but I think they have a good running back group where they're able to kind of rely on multiple guys. And I just think, see, the wide receiver group isn't the best in the world, but you do have Isaiah Williams, Pat Bryant, and... Blanking. I'm excited Hightower. about those Hightower. freshmen that are coming in, honestly. Yeah. And I, 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 oh, Elzy, I mean... Yep. He's going to be huge. I, I think he's going to be an b- impactful player in his freshman year. Hopefully. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about the offense. I mean, they're they're going to be able to throw this year. I mean, not that DeVito couldn't throw, but do you, they, it was just clear Illinois thrived on the run game. Right. Thrived. And that was, yeah, offense kind of ran through Chase Brown. So, yeah. all right. The next game interests me. It intrigues me. Kansas? Yeah. It's a basketball school. It is a basketball school. They started off the season really well. I think they started 6-0 and or something like that. Well, then they lost seven straight? And then they lost seven straight. Okay. To end the year. It was something like that. Maybe they were like 5-1 and one or something. I remember because they were ranked. I think they might have been ranked higher than Illinois. Really? At one point. See, I don't pay attention to those kind of schools. and. Yep. And then I remember they lost to maybe Arkansas. And things kind of just went downhill from there. Got it. Once they lost their first game, everything went downhill. But I will say, I don't know if you watched that, their bowl game. It was one of the best bowl games I've ever watched. That's the game against Arkansas I'm thinking of. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yes. One of our coworkers went to that. Kansas, yes. Yeah. She was at, she was at the game. She was at, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, that was the one down in what? Memphis or Nashville? It was, maybe it was Memphis. Because I know Iowa had, Na- it was Memphis, yep. That was one of the craziest bowl games I've ever watched. And the way it ended, I remember it was like, I think the game ended like 68, 65 or something. It was, it was a like, high-scoring game. It was something I, I remember crazy. the highlights, but I didn't watch it. Yeah, because I think Kansas was down like 25 in heading in the fourth quarter or something like that. They came back. It was insane. And then Arkansas just ended up winning in like triple or like quadruple overtime. All but, right. Before we go too far, yeah. give me, let's go back to Toledo. They'll win. Win or lose. They'll win. 
Score prediction? 42-14. Only they, two touchdowns? If they even get above 14. I was going to say 38 and 13. Well, that's, I mean, that's fair. It, it, the, I thought Chattanooga was going to put up more points last year against Illinois' defense, and they got shut out. Yeah. Pretty sure that was like 38 nothing. Because Chattanooga had a really good offense last year. I mean, they're an FCS. I want to say maybe they got one field goal. Could, it could have been near the end or something like that. But Now I'm curious to, to I just, what it was. I, Illinois will be able to handle business against Toledo. And if they don't, that is a huge red flag to open up the season. Yeah, 31-0. Yeah. All right, the three points was against Virginia. Yep. Yep, but yeah. that was early in the game too. I remember because they might have taken the three. Or maybe it was like seven three, and then. But yeah, I, I think they take care of Toledo, and they should take care of Kansas. Kansas okay. does have a very mobile quarterback where they're able to really change up their offense. He's not bad. He's not a bad quarterback. Um, but Illinois should be able to take care of business right. against Kansas in and Kansas then, too. Yeah, in Lawrence. Yep. And so, I mean, the number three game on the schedule here in Champaign, I think this is going to be probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, games yep. of the year for them. And this is really going to test them early is Penn State coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, That's going to be a tough one. And they were 11-2 and two last year. Penn State's good. Penn State's good. They'll never – I. They can't get over the hump of a Big Ten championship appearance. Yeah. But, I mean, they're really good every year. Their offense is great. They're, well, I was never, I, I've not been a fan of their quarterbacks for like the last like five years. Right. But their offense has been solid. They've produced really good wide receivers. Their defense has been really good. They almost beat Ohio State. They gave Ohio State a run for their money, but weren't able to do it. Penn State's going to be good. That's going to be their, that's going to be their toughest matchup. But I think Purdue's like going to be like that golden game kind of thing because it's Purdue and Ryan Walters going to Purdue. It's right. going to be like their biggest game in quotes kind of thing. And that was the game that knocked them out pretty of much. contention pretty much for the Big yeah. Ten If championship they would have won that game, game, they would have been in the Big Ten championship game. It just kind of went downhill after there because they lost to Michigan State, lost to Michigan. Things just kind of took a turn for the worse. I think I think Illinois loses that game. If I'm being honest, what you think it's going to be high scoring game or you think it's going to be really defensive stand and 13 10 or something is our final score. I, I think what I said for Toledo could be reversed for Penn State. It might be like a Penn State 40 to 13 game. I think just Penn State's very explosive against in going against an Illinois team like this. I, they, the, Illinois would need their offense on the top, top of their game. Like, there could be no mistakes. So you think they need to really fine-tune for through Toledo, through Kansas, and take that into the Penn State game? Yeah. Because that's what, the Fox big yeah. college game day? Yeah. Um, At their noon kickoff or whatever? Yeah. Um, yeah, that, it's a tough game for Illinois to start off the season. You wish that kind of game was later in the season. Yeah. Where they can start off really well and carry momentum. Flying into the game, kind of like they hoped Michigan was going to be, but it, they ended up uh, going into that game, I think, on a two-game losing streak or something. Um, if I remember but, correctly. Yeah, because yeah, it was it, Michigan State that kind of started that. Yep, and, and then, then Purdue. Purdue, yeah. But, I mean, again, that Michigan game was close. It was. If we had a do-over, I think yeah. they would have won that. So they, they, they need to come out on the top of their top of their game to take down Penn State. All right. That'd be tough. Florida Atlantic, I'm not concerned about them no. whatsoever. They don't have Lane Kiffin anymore. It's, yeah. It's, it's not the offense. Basketball, okay. But football, no. It should, it should be a walk in the park for... Illinois. Should be. Score? 42-10? Yeah, probably. All right. That'll probably be a blowout. Should okay. be. So that means they're starting off season three. I mean, depending on what you think about that Penn State game, that's probably a 3 and one start. Yeah. I mean, as much as I would love to see them kick Penn State's ass. Of course. Yeah, probably 3-1 and one through the first four weeks. Yeah. I just... I don't know. Yeah. I say I said th- three and one through the first four games. Penn State's a good football team, like you said. They're well coached too. That's the big thing. Is like I can't think of any shining star on mm-hmm. that team right now. I would have given you an even worse 
margin of victory if that game was at Penn State. Yeah. 100%. Oh, it's tough to go into it's Happy Valley. It's very tough to go there and win a game. Right. They're fan. There's they're fan. I had a friend that went there. Those games are insane. The whiteout games. Just the whiteout games. Just, they pa- their stadium's huge. I'm pretty yeah. sure it fits like. Be sixty thousand? I might be it's wrong, big. but it, it's insane because it's, it's so many know. levels. But yeah, but then the big game after Florida Atlantic would be Purdue. Yeah, That's, I think they take Purdue out. Yeah, I think it'd be a close game. I think they win it. Purdue losing Aiden O'Connell at quarterback is a little tough for them. I mean, not tough for them. They Didn't they easily... lose that big wide receiver who had like their school record or some I think sort so, of a yeah. record with? Yeah. Catches for a season. Yeah, him and O'Connor were a great right. combination. And I mean, in the Big Ten championship game, that was all that quarterback threw to. Mm-hmm. And so, once Michigan kind of had that figured out. Mm-hmm. But but they're bringing back Maccabi to at running back, who's really good. He's a bigger yeah. running back. He's kind of just able to run over guys. But then, as I mentioned, Ryan Walters in at the head coaching position. I mean, he's a huge reason for Illinois' success defensively last right. year. Right. Definitely a huge success, um, a huge part of that success. Um, so I mean, they're going to be good. It's in West Lafayette, so you're at Purdue, not at Memorial Stadium this year. You're going on the road. That's I'm pretty sure that's an ESPN game. It's either ESPN or ABC. It depends on when it's flexed to. Yep. So that'll be a big primetime game. Um, Illinois, I think they'll win, but I think it's going to be really close. I would say maybe a field goal. Determines that game. Okay. Hopefully. High score, low score? Low score. That I think that'll be maybe like, I was going to say like 17-20. Okay. Maybe. I would have said 17-14. That's fair. I was just thinking three points sure. somewhere, either way. But, yeah, give me four and one start for Illinois. Okay. All right, then Nebraska, I mean. Should be a win. Yeah, they're not the black shirts no. of old. Definitely. Mm-hmm. And they just got rid of their head coach at... Yep. It's, you know who's coming in now is Matt Rule. He was the head, oh, co- head coach of the Pan- right. yep. Panthers. Before that, he was with Baylor. But yeah, they got rid of Scott Frost. I mean, first-year coaches coming in. Yeah, He did land some good recruits in the portal, though. Okay. Decent, but I don't think it's, like, groundbreaking. Um, that should be a win. Don't even get me... Yeah, but yeah it's five minutes. I don't want to get started on the portal in college football because mm-hmm. then I'll go down to the... Colorado tangent and Deion Sanders. Yeah, it'll be it'll be a five and one star for them. All right, but the net and the next one is I think. So they play Maryland October fourteenth. This is this is a game that I think is going to be a what's the word kind I want to say like a slip up in the schedule where they're going to kind of overlook this game. I just have a bad feeling seeing Maryland on the schedule. They've had games last year where they just exploded offensively because they have Tualia Tungabailoa. Tua's little brother. Yeah. I'm almost positive he's still there. I just think that game, I forget, what, I, a trap game kind of. That's what I was thinking. I just feel like that's a trap game for them. Going into Maryland, a college park, taking on the Terrapins. I, just, I don't know. I just see it as a trap game for them. I can know. Yeah, and... It's tough to really judge them as well. Um, I mean, they're decent. Same record as Illinois last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I always see it as a lacrosse school. You know, usually one of the top yeah. programs. But, I mean, like you said, football, they're either putting up massive points on people or they're just mm-hmm. not doing much of anything. Yep. I just, I mean, we, we could all, we could act like it's all sunshine and rainbows and they start this whole season like 9-1, and one, sure. but there's, there's going to be a game in there. That that could be the Michigan State game that was last year. Okay. Um, so, for me, I start them off at 5-2 and two after that Maryland game. I don't know if you're taking them to win, um, but I would take them to fall in that one. Okay. I mean, yeah, again, it's tough to yeah. be like, yep. They're losing, but especially against a team like Maryland. I get it. It's tough to kind of judge that at this point in yeah, time. Yeah, I get it. I'll go 6-1 and one right now. Uh, then we good. go to Wisconsin here at home. Mm-hmm. I think they win it. Yeah. I think they played extremely well against Wisconsin last year. Wisconsin didn't make any huge improvements in the portal. They did bring in a new head coach. 
I don't know I'm blanking on who it is. Um, but they did bring in a new head coach. Oh, it's a um, guy from Cincinnati. I don't know why I'm blanking on his name. Uh, coached the Bear- Bearcats to a college football playoff game. I mean, yep. they were undefeated. Um, he took over that job. But it's, it's at Illinois, homecoming. Um, she, Illinois should be able to take care of business. I think so, too. I mean, again, new head coach always seem to have kind of struggles yep. and getting all the team on the same page of what their game plan is. So I'm with you on that. Um, so I'm at 7-1 and one right now. Yep. Penn State, the only loss on my schedule. Mm-hmm. Then Minnesota in Minnesota. Should be a win. They lost Tanner Morgan. He's their quarterback. He was there for like 20 years, it felt like. Um, they should be able to take care of business. Okay. That's 7-2 and two for me. Okay. I'll go 8-1. and one. Mm-hmm. Indiana, 4-8 and eight last year. Yeah. But... I would love they to. They beat Illinois last they year. They did. Illinois should have won that game, too. That was a really bad loss right. for them. That's another game where... Looking, and that was early on in the season, mm-hmm. too, last year. That was another... His first game, is, first game of the season? Maybe second game of the season. First game was first, Wyoming. Yeah, so second game of the season. Because uh, I remember that was the day I moved here. It was, like, September 1st. Yep. And maybe the second. But I, it's so tough. I think they smoke Indiana. They should. Again, that's a basketball school. They 100% should be Indiana. When you, when you look at it, and, I mean... That's a game that I think could be a trap game, but I think Illinois takes care of business. Yeah. And I just don't see Indiana coming out of that, especially at that point in the season. Yep. I think a lot of things are going to be very ingrained. The mm-hmm. offense is going to be on a roll. You know, the team's just going to be clicking at that point in the season. Yeah. But that's also the point in the season last year where they, they kind of just started to decline a little bit. 100%. So... Again, I like it as a victory. Okay. I think it should, I'd say, 31-14. I don't know. Okay. Give Indiana two touchdowns. That'll do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they should win. Hopefully they win, but I think it's a game where Indiana's pr- probably going to play them close. But we'll see. I mean, I-, I take them to win, but it puts them at 8-2 and two for me. Okay. Heading into those final two games here. This is the game where I'd love to give Illinois the credit against Iowa, heading into Iowa. But this is where I think Illinois falls. It- Iowa holds teams de- off- holds teams on offense while they're on defense. So that was poorly explained. Um, they just have a great defense every single year. Yeah. Iowa has Mc- – not McCarthy, McNamara coming in from Michigan, and I think their offense is going to be a lot better this year, where in so many years past, it's just their defense carrying them. Um, but I- Iowa's a good team. Yeah. I mean, again, it's – I hate to give them a loss, but I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. It is always a tough defense. Offense, you know, kind of hit or miss for them mm-hmm. usually. Um, but it's in Iowa – which is tough. It is tough. So, all right, I'll go second loss okay. on the season with yep. game at Iowa. And I have I have my eight and three after that Iowa game. So nine and two for me. Heading Nor- to Northwestern. Northwestern, which should be a it should easy be a win. Dub. Yeah, they 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 killed them last year. I think it was like forty eight to three, maybe. It was it was. I'd almost uh, say yeah. Take a touchdown off the board. Let's say forty-two to three or forty-two yeah. to zero or something yeah. like that. That should be an easy game in Champaign too. It's a rivalry game. Rivalry technically a game for Illinois. And with that, depending on how things line up, that should be a spot in the Big Ten championship for them. I mean, I still, based on what we've been talking about, we're talking two to three losses on mm-hmm. the season. So hopefully. I mean, that would put us on par with, you know, teams that were in that title race last year Mm -hmm. for Big Ten. And are we eliminating the East-West this season? So not this season. that until 2024? That'll be next season. They're going to eliminate the conference, the sides. Not sure exactly. I believe it'll be the top two teams in the conference. A lot of people have been calling for that for, for, for recent years because they want to see like Ohio State, Michigan in the Big Ten Championship because right. people are sick of seeing you know, the team from the West who's definitely not as good right. play a team like Michigan or Ohio State and get blown out every year. 
they'd rather have that big game to decide who's going to college football playoffs, basically. And that is because of the addition of UCLA yeah, and USC? That's a big part of it. With scheduling, it's just tough to... Would you put them in the West and then you're having team... I don't know. I, yes. I think you did... Yeah, I mean, if they weren't going to eliminate it, you definitely have to restructure yeah. a little bit. But, I mean, one thing I think is going to play to the advantage of teams on the East Coast or some of our more Midwest teams mm -hmm. in the Big Ten is these guys coming from California are going to be very jet-lagged. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't think... UCLA or USC are going to fare well in the Big Ten their first couple seasons. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, Chip Kelly isn't going to have the offense that he's kind of had at UCLA the last couple of years. Pac-12, you know, started to kind of lean back to the south once again. Stanford's not great, but USC was back up there this year, but... Now you've got Utah, you've got Washington, mm -hmm. Oregon's always in that conversation too. And now you take those two teams out, add the travel in, they're playing the Michigans, the Ohio States. Um, and again, going coast to coast, mm -hmm. I just don't see those players playing on Saturday morning and being at 100%. Yeah. And that's why they, ta they talked about pool uh con or, yeah conference i don't know what to call it divisions within the conference where it was like UCLA USC maybe Iowa um kind of the closest teams to them where that's the majority of what they'd play but it's still you're going halfway across the country Iowa's still just a few hour yeah. plane ride you know yeah so and that's the closest team to them yep yeah. But they ended up deciding on basically just eliminating the conference. Actually, I take division. Nebraska would be Nebraska. the closest team, but and then Wisconsin, but still, so far away. Yeah. Um. So I think that's kind. Of, they were talking about that. Didn't end up going with it. So eliminating the conference. Illinois is going to take going to begin that 2024 season with a matchup against USC. They'll take on USC in the 2024 season. Then 2025 they'll take on UCLA. So not. You're not going to go out there twice in one year. I was curious if they were going to kind of make teams go back to back, so they're playing USC, then UCLA, and staying in, uh, like the California area. Sure. So that I don't. Know, you're not traveling back and going there, but it looks like they're just going to do one game with each team per year for like Illinois and whatnot. But a big game next year too to keep an eye out on Ohio State. They're going to Ohio State, take on the Buckeyes, Illinois, that is. And then 2025, Ohio State's coming to Illinois. That'll be an exciting game. Yeah. Bringing in a big powerhouse like that. <sighs> and you hate to think about what's going to happen or where they're going to be at if it's going to be an embarrassment or what Illinois is going to look like at that mm -hmm. point in time. I mean, we're talking two years away. Well, next year. Well, yeah, technically two years away. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean... A lot to build on. Oh, yeah. There's a lot that's going to be different with I mean, this I'm team. sure they've got that already marked on the calendar. I bet Brett Bielema has that day circled. Mm -hmm. And I failed to mention next, in 2024, too, they're playing Michigan. In the same season, they're playing Ohio State. Oof. That's two huge matchups where, like, that could be two losses on your schedule right away. Yeah. Which is a tough pill to swallow if you're... I don't know, I'm trying to get, especially since, I forget which year they're starting the college football playoffs. I don't know if it's 2024 or 2025. That it goes to 12? Yeah, it goes to 12 teams. Because if you're an Illinois team. I think team, it's 2024. It could be. And if you're so it would be n this next season. <laughs> well, the year after. So I think it's a 2024, 2025 season. Okay, It might got be it, that. I always get confused when they just throw a year on it. Because that's like, are we talking... Our end year into that new yeah. year, or are we talking the start of the season? Yeah, I'm not sure. So, have to look that up again. But, again, that Michigan game last year against Blake Corum, I think, but again, I don't know. There's a lot to speculate on. So, we'll see. We'll have to address that. Once we get a little bit yeah, closer. Yeah, once we get closer. What I will add to UCLA, that will be at home, too. 
for okay. the 2025 season, which would be cool. Bringing in new face teams to yeah. Memorial Stadium, just seeing those. I mean, UCLA's, I guess, a historic football program. Um, so, I mean, any, that's cool. Yeah. But, yeah. That'll, we'll see. they'll do it this week on um, Rookie in the Vet with Darren Leeds and Dante Furco. Um, we should have some ins. I think we've got Brad Bielema. You're meeting with him next Yeah, week. they're doing some media availability for that. So we'll finally hear so from him. So I'll be interested to see, yeah, what he's got to say. Because this is going to be the first time we've talked to him since the end of last year. Yeah, I feel like he hasn't really talked to the media much since maybe maybe the last National Signing Day. That might have been the last time we heard from him. I'll have to give you some questions I want you to ask. Yeah, because I mean, there's a lot on all these new guys coming yeah. in. Uh, how they're shaping this offense this summer. I mean, we saw a little bit in the spring, but we didn't get a lot because we didn't get a scrimmage. They didn't. Have, they. I mean, they, right. they did a scrimmage, but it wasn't much. And I called they, that. I said it was going to get postponed, severe thunderstorm activity. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it kind of was a little bit of a letdown. But yeah. so we'll see what he has to say. So that's coming up next week. So. Definitely want to tune in for that. Yeah. Well, I'll do it on Ricky and the Vet. Make sure to follow us on our Twitters. Uh, check us out on all podcast streaming platforms. Also, you can watch the video on YouTube if you're not already watching on that already. And uh, we'll see you next week. Sounds good.